Oh, this is WVU football going deep. I'm still Forrest Poston. Trying to catch my breath because I just listened to the press conference with Coach Cabral. And boy, yeah, high energy is an accurate description. Uh, this guy's going to be interesting and fun, I do believe. Uh, <laughs> and to help with pronunciation of his name, he said it's like the backyard brawl. <laughs> this guy already gets it, doesn't he? Um, and yeah, he's a new coach for us. Uh, not new in many respects because he has known uh, Brown, Moore, and... Uh, Leslie for quite a while, <laughs> and by uh, you, this is Berlioz, you haven't seen him for quite a while, so you may not know his name, but he <laughs> didn't feel like sitting off to the side today, and yeah, okay, I like Cabral, no big surprise, but I'm glad, ah, uh, says coaching is the greatest profession in the world. And I know some people wouldn't necessarily agree, but hey, you certainly want guys as coaches who believe that it's the greatest profession in the world. Um, well, technical note, uh, notice before uh, that Coach Brown was saying spur, um, sometimes seemed to be referring to bandit, sometimes to spear. It was a little unclear. Uh, according to Cabral, we are now calling the bandit the spur. And um, spur is the position on the boundary side. Spear is the position on the field side. So a lot more. I don't, as far as I know, we never made the field and boundary distinction before makes sense, but maybe it's always been that way. I don't know. Um, mentioned that the defense uh, is actually a hybrid of multiple uh, concepts. And I don't know that anybody has specifically said that before. Uh, been mentions of how it's similar to the 335 that we uh, used to know. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I think calling it a hybrid that uses hybrids is probably accurate. And he said that allows it to be a very fluid defense. And I think that's something they've really been working on the last several years. Um, hasn't quite come together and may have been causing some of the communication issues, but long-term, good plan. Last year, I think we would have had the people to bring it together if we hadn't had all of these specific injuries, especially Lathan. But I think we're going to really see it this year. Uh, I've talked about yeah, expecting a lot of variation and how they're playing things, and a lot of uh, different pressure schemes, looks, and who's positioned where. I think it's going to be fun. Really makes me long for the days when announcers paid enough attention to tell you when a player was playing in a different spot or we'd brought somebody else in. It's really going to require having good camera work and us to pay a lot of attention to keep up with that because announcers hardly do squat these days. Um, on, like I said, you know, with, in play, in general with players, uh, he, he thinks the adversity in the linebacker room, depth issues, the injuries, all of that, are having a positive effect on guys this year. Uh, they really want to work harder. And as everybody's saying, yeah, it's early in spring. We don't know how much of that's going to carry over. But right now, uh, adversity is paying off. 
And of course, you know, we know Brown talks a lot about how you respond to adversity. He likes adversity, uh, although it's more something you want to talk about after you've gotten better than when you're dealing with it. Uh, says that, you know, playing for West Virginia is important to these guys. And that it's important that it's important because with the NIL factor, having guys dedicated to the program, to the culture, makes a difference. I've mentioned that before. Uh, Cabral's been here for two months or so, has already picked up on it. Um, so, hey, I, I'm glad that I'm right, but I'm also glad that it seems to be paying off uh, and to hear that it's paying off. And I think you know, he sees things a little differently because he's new and lucky enough maybe to be coming in at a time when it has all come together and you can see it uh, more clearly instead of seeing some of the conflict that it may have created in the locker room in previous years. Um, also says that he owes everything to this game uh, and to the coaches that brought him through this game. Uh, so, again, we have a coach who is very dedicated to the game, very dedicated to the players. And I think that will also carry over to be dedicated to the team and the school and the state, which, of course, that's something Brown looks for, something we know Baker looks for, because he talked about it with the basketball hire. Um Also, you know, as far as specific players, <laughs> high on French, uh, and actually, you know, you know, Appalachian State played against French, uh, so yeah, he has dealt with him directly. Uh, but yeah, so you know, French, awesome, uh, you know, and he's he's happy to have him on our side now. Uh, on Wuka, of course, hey, he's technically a high school senior playing college ball now. Um, but said, you know, hey, had two or three plays today that show he's getting it. Is he there yet? Nah. Um, if he's there by fall, it'll be great. If he's there enough to play, um, well, okay, you know, Maybe want him to redshirt, but, you know, still, if we need him, we need him to get it. And it sounds like he's on his way. Uh, Bradley. You know, Bradley has been awesome. He's got fire. Uh, great in the meeting rooms and taking on an extra leadership. So, um and that's the thing, you know, with Bradley, we keep saying, man, I hope the bowl game wasn't a fluke and is a sign of things to come. Well, here we are early in spring, and it sounds like sign of things to come. So the news we are hearing on players is good. Um, I also heard from Tyler Allen and... Once again, glad we got him. As Cabral said about French, I'm glad he's on our side. Uh, he's another guy who has just been dedicated to coaching. Knew in high school he wanted to be a coach. So when his arm was injured and it was a choice between surgery and a chance to coach, he took the chance. Uh, he got offered what's essentially a graduate coaching spot at LSU, even though he was an undergraduate, but it got his education paid for, even though he wasn't getting paid as a coach, which made it a little odd when we had a coaching change and the new coach <coughs> fired him. So fired a non-paid 
uh, employee. Uh, but, uh, you know, the previous coach liked him, uh, knew, knew about a spot at Troy, helped him get it. That's how he came to be with uh, Coach Brown and the gang. Uh, Matt Canada was the coach who got him the job, and Canada got hired at Maryland about a month later, offered uh, Allen a spot there, more money. Allen stayed at Troy. Now, he didn't say that it was an issue of loyalty, that you don't jump a ship you just got on, but that was the impression. And loyalty is another one of those things. Uh, well, it's it's not just mountaineers who approve of loyalty, but it is part of the best side of being a mountaineer. So I like that. Now, I will tell you, man, the thing I really like about Alan uh the details. I don't know if he will be like this, you know, as he, you know, goes on. But you look back at Graham Harrell, and a lot of questions Harrell just said, well, you do it. Harrell was not big on understanding and expressing the details. And I have a feeling that's going to be a limitation in his coaching career, uh, not just his press conference career. Uh, Reagan gave us some details. The uh, you know press conferences he did last year, he was he was good at details. Allen is great at details. Man, I, it was just fun to listen to. Um. Now he looks more like I don't know. He looks more like a you know college you know age quarterback than Green does right now, but he obviously knows what he's talking about. Uh, now he did say you know I mean he didn't say specifically. Reagan did some things he didn't agree with, but he did say he gets to do what he wants now, how he wants, instead of necessarily just what Reagan is doing. So clearly there were some differences, and I mean, yeah, there should be. You don't want clones. Um, <laughs> hey, Green has been getting all sorts of you know hype and the PFF stuff, but there's a lot he needs to work on. And Green knows it. Green isn't buying into the hype. But he also said Green has the ability, the talent, and the understanding to fix the things he needs to work on. And that, I mean, he said Green should be top in the country. So that's what we might be well it's okay it's what we're hoping for this season. Let's let's be straight on that. Uh we might actually get it. Now is that saying Green is going to be the very best college quarterback this year? No, not necessarily. Is it saying he's going to win the Heisman? No, not necessarily. Uh, especially since the best college quarterback doesn't always win the Heisman. Uh, but he's going to be up there. He's going to be a top college quarterback. Uh, now, uh, Green and Brown had both mentioned uh, doing the cut-ups of video to examine. Uh, Allen went into that a little bit more detail. You know, he said, you know, he and... Green sat there together and especially watched the ones that were bad passes. And so much of it was about the drop. Said, you know, 
dropped different every time the footwork was sloppy. So they've seen it. They know it. Now they fix it. Um, also said, you know, and <laughs> people got really ticked off, some people, uh, when Green would have a pretty good game overall, a game West Virginia would win. And then Brown would say, you know, there were some things he could have done better, should have done better. Well, Allen was more specific, you know, especially on the deep throws. You know, he said there were throws. He mentioned one in particular to Ray on a post uh, where if Green had thrown it to the middle, he would have thrown Ray open instead of trying to throw it over the corner. That's something they're working on, and not just completions, but throwing it where the receiver can catch and run instead of catch and get tackled. So a completion isn't always a good pass or not good enough. Take the next step up. Um also, he said, you know, Green had, you know, more issues with accuracy moving to his left, which is, you know, you know not really surprising, but it's something to work on. Um, Markiel, and again, he's, you know, very clear. Last couple of months, Markiel has taken a big step up. Um, and a lot of it, I mean, it, understanding preparation Said, you know, in, you know, in high school, Mark Yule basically, you know, he, he looked at the receiver. That was all he read. Because, uh, you know, you quite often don't have to do that much more in high school. And he's finally learning to read the bigger game. You know, read the defense, do the film study ahead of time so that you understand what you're reading in the defense um, and it enables him to you know, make a much better choice and make it faster because he said hey guys you know there were five of the 10 sacks last year Markio started two games five of those sacks were his now they weren't all in the games he started a couple I think came in cleanup you know duty. But, he's, you know, half the sacks were on Marchio and a whole lot fewer plays. Uh, and Marchio can run. I mean, it's not like he couldn't get away, but not fast enough on the read and not good enough with in-pocket adjustments. That feel for when, you, when you've got defenders around you moving up moving over make the throw and that's where he's getting better um so we no, don't necessarily like to hear about what we're not doing well but it's great to hear about doing better and i mean i Again, I think we have a really good quarterback coach. Um, he's young, but he's been coaching a long time. Um, so let's see. Other things with Mark Eel, Um Yeah, one of the things, you know, teaching Mark Eel, you know, that a quarterback, and maybe even especially the second string quarterback, has to be like another coach. He has to prep. He has to know. He has to help. He has to study. You know, it is, I mean, it's not a full-time job. It's time and a half. <laughs> Plus, you have to do the schoolwork. Um, Boyle and Keene, and that's a scholarship Scholarship, QB, and a walk-on. But, of course, Keene has been around for a good while. Obviously, they're fighting for the number three and need to work out a distinct 
number three. That does bring up the question of, you know, I mean, if Boyle isn't able to nail down at least the three spot, will he be one of the transfers? Because we do still need three guys to hit the portal, three scholarship players. We're still over that limit. And if they want to bring anybody else in from the portal, and there aren't any special needs, but hey, if there's a top player out there, you might want it. So for something like that, or to give a walk on a scholarship, we'd need more than three to go. Uh, will Boyle be one of them? I don't know. If Keen is good enough to win the number three spot, I'm not worried. I mean, you know, we've got, we keep getting these walk-on quarterbacks who aren't bad quarterbacks. You know, um, you don't expect a walk-on to necessarily work their way into playing time, but having a number three who's a walk-on isn't a bad thing if he's ready. Okay, um, those were the only two press conferences today. Um, I think, you know, today was, I think, first day in pads, but uh, nobody really talked about that too much. It wasn't something that uh, the media there really asked about, so no update on that. We'll hear more about that next week, I'm sure, and uh, probably... No new videos until we have more press conferences, unless something else comes up unexpectedly. Always a possibility. So in the meantime, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I'll see you again later. Uh, remember to subscribe, click thumbs up, make comments, click the share, and tell your friends. So long, guys.